I bought CBD oil from Amazon, yeah. so I didn't buy CBD oil, did I? Exactly. Dang it! Right on. So <laughs> hemp and marijuana are different. They're different. They're like uh, I'd like to think of them as like sisters. You know, they're related. They're all part of the cannabis uh, plant. One's naughtier than the other. And basically, yeah. yeah. <laughs> One's misbehaving. Yeah. 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 They look exactly alike. Right? They, 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 they they're look, twins. Yeah, they look exactly alike. a great alike. way to think about it. It's like a twin set. <laughs> <laughs> Siblings. Twin. One's yeah. having a really hard time just adjusting to yeah. college. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> She's just finding herself. <laughs> She's on a gap year. Right. And right. one's just like declared her major and doing good. <laughs> She's just focused. <laughs> That is really a good analogy. Yeah, yeah. The research is just kicking up. That's kind of what I like. And I think that's what's going to help break the stereotype and more regulations certainly going to occur. That's all good. You know, I think the, like I said, the good guys in the industry, we're all happy with that kind of stuff. Yeah. Thank you for listening to the Guys Who Do Stuff podcast. Visit guyswhodostuff.com. You probably shouldn't Google that. Well, welcome to the Guys Who Do Stuff. I'm Joe. I'm Josh. And this is the show where we help you get unstuck, tell a better story, and have a good answer to the question, what are you doing today? Today in the studio, we're excited to have Matt Weschler. Excellent. Thanks for having me. Yes. Yeah. And we have our, I'm really excited also to be welcoming a guest host, Maddie Blanchard. Maddie. Hey, guys. Yay, I'm Maddie. so excited to be back. Welcome. Mm-hmm. So what you guys don't know from listening at home is we just did this a second ago because yeah, I forgot yeah. to hit record. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, just thought I'd confess. Round two, this is going to be yeah, good. round two is so much better. <laughs> yeah, it was only about three minutes worth, right, Yeah, Jim? it wasn't okay, too bad. Yeah. I'm really excited to talk to you, Matt, about how you spent the last 20 years of your professional life in microscopy, which is electron microscopes, awesome stuff, which I now know. Yes, well done, because we just, I just did it a second ago and messed it all up. We can rewind, though. It's all good. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, I did. I, I spent the last 20 years uh, working uh, with uh, using, selling, and marketing electron microscopes. And these are these are cool microscopes. They're huge things like the size of a desk. They're large, uh, but, but you can see super small things with them, like smaller than a human hair. So yeah. uh, really small. Actually, with some of the microscopes, you can see like the actual atoms that are in this table or whatever. It's crazy. So wow. Oh, my, are you serious yes. Yeah, right you can. Now? So what does it, it, it My look mind like? is blown. It looks like a bunch of small dots, actually, yeah, when you get down to it. It's not, it's sort of uh, not that exciting. When, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, it's cool when you think about what you're seeing, but uh, but so science scientists get excited about it, of yeah. course, but yeah. I can see so. my soul. <laughs> oh, gosh, a <laughs> bunch much. of small dots. <laughs> <laughs> So you've been doing that for 20 years and then you decided to do, and this is, I love these kind of stories. I just want, I want to find out how this happened. And now you're like, you know what? I need, I need a new challenge. And so you started Peak City CBD, which from an outside standpoint, it seems like, or from my perspective, seems like a yeah, whole new yeah. thing for you. <laughs> right. Sort of. So it's all, you know, science related sort of, but uh, I'm, I'm a chemist by training and uh, I just woke up and uh, kind of decided that I wasn't, wasn't really jazzed about doing it every day and wanted to try something different. And, uh, a uh, good, good buddy of mine, actually a good friend of mine that I've known for about like 11 years, uh, is a, a hemp grower. And we had just started talking, you know, some months ago, and this is kind of where it all started. Actually, that's kind of where the idea for Peak City started just, uh, yakking with a friend of mine about his, uh, his hemp growing and it's not his full-time job, uh, uh either right now, but, uh, it's something that he's dabbling in. And th- this is how the, this is how the whole company started. So yeah, I bought a bunch of equipment and uh, put together a lab and sort of figured out the recipe of how to make CBD. There's no like cookbook, you know, Betty Crocker doesn't list out the CBD <laughs> recipe yet. At least what, what Peak City does today is make it and, and produce different products. Tell me a little bit about like, I'm kind of ignorant about CBD. I know a little bit about it. I know that when my dad had stage four cancer, it helped him. And uh, my mom had to go find some at the farmer's market and try to find real CBD oil. So yeah. I know there's kind of, there's some confusion about like the quality of it because it's an currently unregulated by the FDA kind of state. Yeah. And then I also know that I've heard people say, that, and I've used it for my dog and I think it helped my dog out. And I've heard all kinds of people say that it's great for all kinds of stuff, ailments, uh, like, um, uh, uh, what's it? When you, you know, you can't arthritis. arthritis, yes. Arthritis, people yeah. People say that it's been effective for that. And so what exactly is CBD? Good, good question. Yeah. And there's, there, so CBD is, uh, stands for cannabidiol. It's a, it's a organic compound and, uh, it's found in, uh, certain things, including hemp. 
And what you basically have to do is uh, extract the CBD or the cannabidiol out of the hemp. Hemp is a plant, you know, it grows in a field, right? So, um, so you can use some equipment that I have to take the CBD out of hemp. It's sort of like, uh, in some ways it's analogous to like brewing coffee. You know, you put the coffee grounds in your coffee maker and what you get out is a cup of coffee and that coffee contains like caffeine. So right. caffeine might be analogous to like CBD. So, um, uh, so, you know, that's, that's nuts and bolts. What CBD is, uh, what, what CBD can do for people is kind of crazy. Uh, you, you can look online and there's, uh, any number of different things that people say CBD has helped them with, you know? So I'm not a guy that says that, you know, CBD is like a cure all. I don't, I don't think it is going to help everyone for everything, but yeah. it's, it's really nuts to hear, read some of the stories and hear some of the real life stories that I hear about how the CBD helps people. So, um, it, it's true though. It can help with, uh, inflammation, aches and pains, anxiety. Um, we've got some people using it for like, uh, ADD kind of things where, uh, it can help uh, children with that, even maybe help them sleep to uh, uh, enhance their experience and sort of minimize the ADD kind of stuff. Uh, there's, you know, a laundry list of things that can actually seemingly help with. So, and uh, it's, it, it's pretty amazing. Yeah. So what was it about the, uh, the science of CBD that got you interested, obviously coming from a scientific background? Yeah, I think really. So, uh, I hadn't thought about it too much, uh, honestly, before, uh, chatting with my buddy that, that, uh, runs a hemp farm. Um, but. So then it was just like a late night Google search that just led to one thing <laughs> to another. And you're like kind of, more yeah, and more I mean, excited. Yeah. Well, I, I had, I had always wanted to get a little bit more back into the chemistry side of things. So doing electron microscopes, like I said, I, I love it. <clears throat> I love it. I still like it. It's a lot of fun. Um, but it, uh, wasn't like maybe using some of my chemistry knowledge daily, you know? Uh, so the more I kind of did it, I wanted to, wanted to get, get back into the nuts and bolts, uh, chemical side of things a little bit. And this seemed like a perfect avenue to do it. So I got to buy some cool, cool equipment, you know, which any kind of chemist guy likes, right. To <laughs> buy some cool lab stuff and, uh, and use it. And so, and, but, you know, aside from that though, really it's, uh, realizing some of the real life stories of how it can help people. That's, right. uh, you know, that that's, I've that's, got this image of you in like, um, the bat cave, you know, with uh, a <laughs> mad scientist uh, coat mm -hmm. on in with your boy toys, yeah. Yeah. all sciencey. Pretty beakers, much. Yeah. Beakers full of condensation right? floating Pretty in the air. Right. The thing going yes. through my head was uh, yellow jumpsuits and you're cooking oh, like blue yes. CBD oil. Like yes. I got a very strong breaking bad. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have heard that before from some of my friends, but yeah, it, it's, it's totally legit though. Right? By the way, Netflix, Netflix just said they're making a Breaking Bad movie sequel. Ooh. Jesse Pinkman's coming back, coming out on October 11th. Movie and, sequel. Yeah. Nice. Interesting. I'm in that'll get me through the fall. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Well, that your uh, your lab coat's white, isn't it? My lab coat is white. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. not not yellow, and there's no orange stripes either. Oh, right. <laughs> Don't ruin it for us, Matt. <laughs> so uh, how do you take care of ethically creating and marketing CBD oil? Because I love that I looked on your website. You're a family-owned business in Apex. Yep. And I don't know about you guys have been out networking and just meeting people. I've met some people that sell CBD oil that are really nice people that don't overstate and don't do like crazy stuff. And I do marketing. And so some of it comes across as like, yeah, I appreciate your approach. And then I've met some people that sell CBD oil that you could just refer to a snake oil salesman. Um, that's just like crazy promises, all this stuff that you know is not backed up by yeah. anything and just feels a little bit unethical. Uh, Gary Vanderchuk was speaking at a convention recently for people that are getting into the cannabis market. And he was quoted as saying, there's two things that it would be smart for you to do as a marketer. Uh, one, don't make stuff up. Uh, mm -hmm. And two, don't be scared to put stuff out. You know, I think the thing from a marketing standpoint that people want to hear from, from people that sell a product is the stories of people that it, that it impacted. Right. Um, so back to the question, your family owned business in Apex um, how do you fight the big pharma stereotype and skepticism that people have yeah, for your industry? The industry is pretty crazy, really, actually, like, like you sort of alluded to, there's a, there's a, a, a fair amount of people doing this kind of thing. And some of the, com some of the outfits that do this are enormous, you know, like we're, we're, we're small, you know, family yeah. owned, literally, I don't have millions of dollars of investors behind me, but some of these guys do like, uh, you know, lots of millions. So it's, it's, it's a, it's a strange industry. There's some huge players and then there's, you know, small potatoes kind of like me right now. And right. for, for our company, you know, I don't, I don't need to, uh, 
dominate the world of CBD or whatever, you know, that's, that's, that's not really what I want either. I just want a small piece of it, you know, and I want to help a few people here and there yeah. and do what I can do. Um, and it's true though, what you said that there's a lot of claims and stuff out there. And that's something that in the industry, I think the good guys are trying to be really aware of and careful about not to make, you know, outrageous claims and, yeah. and, you know, say, yeah, you know, CBD is going to cure your Alzheimer's or whatever. Uh, the fact is it might help a little bit, but there's not enough research done yet to really right. say that, Hey, it's going to do this. So, so the, I think there's, there's some industry groups that uh, we belong to and that a lot of the good players in the industry belong to that are kind of on the lookout for stuff like this. They want to do it right. They yeah. want to market it right. They want to uh, state the claims uh, correctly and not overstep the bounds and things like that. Well, I would imagine for most consumers, I don't know about like you guys, but I would much rather do business with a local person with a background in it that's growing it in extracting it and then selling it locally than big pharma. Yeah. hundred <laughs> <laughs> percent. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And, that, and that's, that, and that's what we hope really. And part of the the cool thing about our story, I think is that like, you know, from the field to the bottle where I put the stuff, it's all under our control. You know, I, right. I, I know the guy, he's a great friend of mine that owns the hemp farm. I trust him. It's all organic. He doesn't mm -hmm. put pesticides down. He does it all right. And then after it comes out of the ground, it's all, it's all in my hands. So, you know, and I, I do it right too. We use all organic stuff and that, and that's part of what we're trying to do too. So, and you know, some companies don't, and you just got to be really aware of, uh, what you're doing with CBD because it's not that regulated right now. Right. So people, uh, people can get into it that maybe shouldn't be into it. You know, there's a lot of great companies of course, but there perhaps are some that are not. Yeah. And it's not that regulated pretty much because of right now where it sits, right. That's just not approved as a supplement by the FDA. That's basically it. Yeah. Basically it did. The thing pretty much just became legal, uh, legal, legal, legal. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Leave <them> everyone. <laughs> Thank you, Josh. Yeah, for <laughs> highlighting, that highlighting that. But uh, yeah, it, it pretty much became legal in October of uh, 2018, you know, after the farm bill was totally yeah. passed. So crazy recently. Crazy, you know. But that's you, federal law. So that's everywhere it's legal. Everywhere. It's legal in all 50 states, you know. Uh, and um, the, the deal with CBD is it has to come from hemp. And hemp is uh, a plant that has less than 0.3% uh, THC. So THD is kind of the stuff that's in marijuana and, and that's what we avoid with the hemp plant. So, so hemp and marijuana are different? They're different. They're like, uh, I'd like to think of them as like sisters, you know, they're related. They're all part of the cannabis uh, plant. One's naughtier than the other. And basically, yeah. yeah. <laughs> One's yeah. misbehaving. Yeah. Yeah. And they look exactly alike. Right? They, they, they they're they twins. Look, yeah, they look exactly alike. It's a great alike. way to think about it. It's like a twin set. <laughs> <laughs> Siblings. Twin. One's yeah. having a really hard time just adjusting to yeah. college. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's just finding herself. <laughs> She's on a gap year. Right. And right. one's just like declared her major and doing good. <laughs> She's just focused. <laughs> that is really a good analogy. Yeah, yeah. So but, uh, the 2008 farm bill that passed uh, made it legal. And then, so now the idea of, of, do you think that it's going to create a bunch of people now jumping into the market? Do you think the market's going to get flooded? I, I think so. I think so, you know, and maybe only the strong will survive or the people that can do it right. So I think, I think there's a, a lot of people trying to get into it all the way from the growing of the hemp to the making the products, uh, there's a lot of labs that have popped up for analyzing hemp because, yeah. uh, you know, one of the kind of interesting things about uh, like having a hemp farm is that uh, the agriculture agency comes out at least like once a year to test the hemp and they need to make sure that it has less than this magic number, which is 0.3% uh, THC. And, you know, most of the time it works out all good because uh, the grower knows what they're doing, but sometimes it doesn't. If it has just a little bit above that percentage, they, uh, what, what I hear they do is they actually kind of, uh, take the whole field. So it's not oh, wow. like, it's not like, you know, they slap you on the hand and just say, Oh, naughty boy, you know, you have to try again. The fact is, I think they might give you two tries or two different tests, but they, they they'll wipe out your whole field. And these plants are expensive, you know, they're, uh, they're, they're, uh, uh, expensive plants to put in the ground and mm -hmm. to, to make happen. So, um, in, interesting stuff. So, yeah, I think, I think more people are going to get into the industry uh, all the way from growing to bottling and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. But uh, Is North Carolina a good place to grow hemp? I think it's a great place to grow hemp. I think it's actually like the third biggest uh, place uh, is what I read recently. I think Montana is like the first. For the ground and the weather? Ground and the weather, I guess, yeah. Which yeah. actually I love for the uh, farmers. 
I mean, it's given the farmers an opportunity now that they didn't have before. Yes. Yeah. Um, and I know, you know, just in the UK, watching the farming community, you know, have to diversify and find other ways. Um, that's awesome. That kind of gives me a good feeling, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's given farmers something new to do that can be very lucrative uh, if, if you do it right. And, uh, and you know, it's, yes, it's good for farmers. It's good for the soil. Uh, hemp is kind of a, another, an, another fun fact for you today about hemp. Please. Is that, uh, need to make a little show in there. <laughs> fun fact about hemp. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Put some music in there. <laughs> it's kind of interesting. So what, what they actually use hemp for a lot in China is to, uh, help, uh, prepare the soil for other crops. So because hemp is uh, what they call a bioaccumulator. Oh. And so that means it sucks. It's like a bish Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hella it, clear. Uh, it, uh, it sucks all the badness out of the soil. So, uh, you know, one thing when you're growing hemp to do CBD and good things with it is you want to have good soil because it's going to suck anything bad uh, out of the soil. So like it, it takes heavy metals and stuff and leaches them out. So what uh, anyway, the moral to my story was another tidbit about hemp is that like in China, they use it to clear out soil for other products, you know, mm. and, they, and then they just like throw the hemp away or use it for, uh, for uh, textiles or something like that. But, That's so cool. Yeah. I would love a, to hear a little bit more about the, the differences between, because I think people, part of the stereotype with CBD oil is they know it comes from marijuana, but the stuff that comes from hemp, the sister plant, the effects of the, the chemicals inside of it, are, are they completely different? Are they similar? Well, so is like, anybody getting high from CBD oil? No, no, no. <laughs> that's that's you know what 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 you read online a lot, and some people advertise is you, you get the the healing without the high, right? With CBD, so and it's true. So it, it's it is the uh, it is the THC that that in marijuana they get you high, and and the concentration is so low in hemp, uh, and and even lower by the time you actually get it in a product like a CBD oil. Uh, the concentration of THC is so low that it doesn't do anything to you. So, but it is like, uh, so CBD is one piece of the puzzle in, in what, uh, what, what goes into some of these CBD products, including ours at Peak City. Uh, there's other things as well, like uh, other uh, cannabinoids and terpenes. Cannabinoids. Cannabinoids. <laughs> Now you're speaking my language. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right on, Josh. Josh, yeah. you don't know what that is. Those I are the three things. cannabinoids in my backpack, y'all. Oh. Come on now. Right here. Well, everybody knows that cannabinoids are the little red people that deliver your pizza late <laughs> if it's not there in five minutes. Oh, yes, they will stop yeah. the pizza from arriving. Thank you for clarifying, Josh. Uh, Matt, you may continue. <laughs> So yeah, like uh, cannabinoids and terpenes and CBD is a cannabinoid and all these things kind of work together actually uh, in, in, in an effect that's actually sort of published and studied a lot. It's called the entourage effect. And it's where like CBD and these terpenes and these other cannabinoids that are in hemp all kind of get together and they- Hang on, what's the terpenes? Terpenes are actually wicked cool. It's a it's an area of chemistry that I'm sort Why of- Why is everything dealing with CBD oil have such a cool name? I know, I know. Right? Terpenes, yeah. cannabinoids, the yeah. entourage effect. Yeah. <laughs> right. I feel like you need to say it in a radio announcer voice. I, know, I right. just love how big, you all can't see this, but I just love how big his eyes got when he said that. <laughs> it's wicked cool. That's wicked so funny. He became, he came- from Boston at that moment. Too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So terpenes are, uh, they're, they're another group of chemicals and there's a bunch of them, a bunch of different ones like, and you, you've, you've used them or seen them in other places too. So some, some common terpenes are like, uh, limonene. So it's, uh, L I M O N E N E, I think is how you spell it. And then it's got a lemony spent, a uh, scent, scent. <laughs> and, uh, so, uh, that's in some other products, like even like cleaning products. Some, some products have the terpene limonene and limonene in them. And, uh, there's some other common ones too, that, uh, um, are in lavender and other things that we kind of have in candles and other commonplace things today. But in the hemp, they're, uh, involved in this entourage effect too. They work with CBD and they all kind of, the, the analogy is that like CBD is the driver of the bus, but the terpenes and the other cannabinoids are the passengers on the bus. Mm. And it all helps in what they call this entourage effect. So, so do you pop those in there? Do I pop the terpenes in? <laughs> yeah, you like yeah. putting everything. Are you is it when you're in your yeah. lab, you know, mixing it all up? You're yeah. putting those terpenes in there. That's a great question. So that, you you are involved in their inception with other things. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, thanks for asking that, Maddie, because that's that's part of uh, that's a really cool part of the story. I think so with the with the way that we um, extract the CBD and all the other stuff from the hemp. What I can do is I can extract CBD uh, and I can also extract the terpenes 
And what I do is I add back in the terpenes so that, you know, I, I like, I, I like this whole story. I like this entourage effect thing. I think there's more to actually, uh, how CBD helps people than just CBD. I think you really do need some of these other things like ah, the, the process. So, yeah. So the process is critical. To, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm dropping the terpenes back in, which, which is a good thing. And it, they smell really cool by the way, too. So, you know, like I said, you got this li- limonene, this, uh, lemony smell and other things. It's, uh, there's, there's terpenes that are in beer as well. Some, you know, some of these, uh, uh, hoppy kind of things. Those are some terpenes and, uh, flavonoids and there's all these cool really cool science words that i just like to say as often as i can but uh, you need some t-shirts with those words <laughs> on it like dropping terpenes yeah i don't think yeah. it, i don't think it's a coincidence you know that the benefits are in the process mm. you know mm, right. i think mm-hmm. there's so much more to that mm. it's cool right on yeah yeah so what was going on in your life when you decided you know 20 years in this field got all my experience here I'm going to partner up with my buddy and we're going to do something completely different. Like what was, <laughs> what was going on there that you were like, I'm going to become a farmer slash oil extractor. It's kind of crazy, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so the, the, the company I was working with, uh, with microscopes, I still uh, work with them a little bit today. I talk with them all the time. They're good buddies. I was, so you didn't have one of those. Take no. this job and shove it conversations. No, no, no. no right. they're great, great, <laughs> great guys. I love them. They've been my friends for over 20 years. Actually, we used to work at kind of one of the big microscope uh, OEMs together, one of the big guys. And uh, like the last uh, 11 years or so doing microscopes, uh, the, the the company I worked with and um, uh, worked with the refurbished microscope. So we would buy them on the market. And we'd uh, have a group of really experienced service engineers that refurbish them, remanufacture them and make them like new. And then we'd resell them. So it's a really cool industry. And there's not a lot of people out there like that, that actually yeah. t- touch the scope to that level. And they're crazy expensive, right? They can be. Yeah. They're anywhere from like on the low end, like 50 K up to yeah. eight, 800 K for a, for a used one. If you want to talk new, you're talking easily, you can get yeah. to a couple mil. So it's, I know that because not because I'm smart and I've done research on microscopes, but because I watched that storage war show and they found a piece of an electron yes. microscope in there one time yeah. and they were like, if it was new, it'd be worth a hundred thousand dollars. And they're like, yeah, but they're like, what you have here is garbage. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, you talk about these microscopes and it's, it's a, you know, it's a crazy budget regime really of how it goes. But, uh, so, so, um, you know, really, uh, can't say enough about, of, of my experience there and kind of what I learned from the microscope industry and as far as using them and selling them and marketing them and talking to customers and learning what they, what they need and stuff like that. But I just, uh, I don't know. I don't know if you want to call it a midlife crisis or just what, like, you know, like I said, I, I love the guys I was working with. The company was great, but I just wasn't, wasn't, uh, I was waking up kind of feeling like it was more of a job sometimes than, than I thought I wanted it to be. Yeah. And, uh, kind of figured, you know, what, what the hell let's, let's try something different. And then just kind of probably weeks before I made the decision, I had been talking to the the hemp farmer, my, my buddy a little bit. And so that seed, uh, no pun intended was kind of <laughs> planted, you know, and, uh, th- that's, that's really how it started. We're, we're, uh, we've kind of had a few other small businesses over the years, nothing, nothing like totally all in like we are now. So we weren't like totally afraid of taking a little bit of a leap. And, right. uh, and my wife does have a, uh, we, we own another small business that she runs and she's very successful at that. So I wasn't totally jumping off the cliff. Like, you know, we're going to blow through our savings and stuff and have no cash coming in. Uh, so, uh, anyway, that's, well, what know, does she do? What does she do? Mindy, uh, runs, uh, a business that, uh, sells on Amazon and, uh, we sell uh, wholesale stuff. Uh, we, we sell on Amazon FBA or prime. So like, Amazon's kind of confusing to people sometimes. Everybody, yeah. everybody uses it, right? I probably use it nightly on my phone ordering miscellaneous stuff, right? But so... Oh yeah, me too. But when you go and most people have like a Prime membership, which means what you pay 99 bucks a year. Maybe it's more. 129, bro, thank you. Yeah. It's up. Yep, thank you. <laughs> and like it matters. We're all going to pay it. They could make it 200 <laughs> and we'd be like, oh, that's crazy. Here's uh, my money. That's the thing. Don't. <laughs> they might be listening. Don't say that though. So, but... Uh, but uh, so, you know, sometimes when you buy stuff on Amazon, it has the little prime icon next to it. And that right. doesn't, doesn't, does not necessarily mean that it comes from Amazon, that Amazon's the seller. So what we are, uh, what Mindy's business is, is uh, prime sellers on Amazon. So what, uh, 
what Mindy does is buy stuff uh, wholesale. So it, it's all over the place, pretty much anything that makes money. So it's, oh. it's some beauty products, it's some pet products. It's uh, so let's take a beauty product. We, we buy it from a vendor. Uh, we work with a warehouse that's close by locally here and that stuff goes to a warehouse and those guys label it with Amazon labels and then it goes into an Amazon warehouse. So like when Maddie shops on Amazon and she decides she wants to buy something, it might be from, from my wife's business oh, wow. and w it's going to come to you at your house from Amazon, Yeah. but it actually started off with us. Hey, so that's, so that, know that's, about this. Yeah. that's, that's sometime how, sometimes how prime works. Other times it actually does come like direct from Amazon as the seller. They, they actually work with, with companies too, to buy stuff. But yeah. so it's a, it's a, it's a very competitive business and Amazon makes a lot of money on it from people like us because uh, they, they actually end up making more in the end than we do, you know, which wow. is, which is fine. But we're, we're utilizing their service, you know, and obviously their platform. So are CBD products, something that are available on Amazon. That's an interesting story, actually. So no is the short answer right now. It's, you know, CBD, even though it's legit and legal, it's got a stigma about it and uh, it's, it's not allowed. You, so Amazon just is deeming it as too hot to handle right now. Right they now. don't want to yep. assume any liability. Yeah, but the weird thing is, like, if you if you go to Amazon... So and, I bought it, CBD oil from Amazon, yeah. so I didn't buy CBD oil, did I? Exactly. Dang it! Right on, brother. You know, yeah. thought he was getting it, and he acted like it based on psychological yeah. effect of thinking he's yeah. getting it. It was a placebo. Yeah, yeah, yeah it yeah, worked. Yeah, yeah. Dang it. Powerful thing. No. I kind of thought that's what was going to happen. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and th this is actually worth talking about for a minute, I think, because it's, it's way confusing, like, because if you go on Amazon and you type in CBD oil, it's going to pop up a bunch of stuff, like hundreds of listings. And, uh, they, w what's allowed to be sold on Amazon right now, though, is called hemp, hemp seed oil. It's different than CBD oil. So it's, it, it's, a uh, it, what's being sold comes from the hemp seed. It actually has very, very little CBD in it. So, so essentially it's the stuff without the chemicals that might be for it's the, no entourage. It it's all like oil, it no is. entourage. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? They're not dropping a lot of terpenes on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah, you went there. I love it. <laughs> Let's just leave it at that. Dropping guys. terpenes. Yeah. That's yeah. the title of this episode. So yeah. yeah, anyway, you know, and and there are some benefits to the stuff you can buy on Amazon for sure, but it's not, it's not, you, you, people can't get confused. It's not, it's not true CBD oil. So well, you're ready when the ball drops. You're ready. You're there. You're positioned. We totally are. Yeah. yeah. And we're, and we know yeah. how to, we know how to do that stuff. So I'm, we're on the ready. I'm checking daily to see when they, when nice. they allow it, you know, but that's so crazy. Last night at about 1030, a client of mine was like, do you know any wholesalers to get on Amazon? And I'm like, nope. <laughs> so I got to talk to you afterwards. Like, could you connect Excellent, with Excellent, yeah. Person? But, um, it, but her, her business is pretty cool and it's a, it's a really interesting thing. So, yeah. So that that's keeping us, uh, you know, between uh, that and Peak City or we're staying afloat. How but, did you guys handle the uh, the feedback that you got from like your 20 year friends in the in the microscope industry and your family about like, all right, <laughs> we're doing this. We're going yeah. this new route. Was I'm sure there were some people that were stoked for you and some people that thought you were... Heisenberg from Breaking Bad and yeah yeah I think yeah, all, all the above like you said yeah so a little bit of both uh you know family and friends obviously pretty excited they I think they kind of knew that I maybe wanted to get back into the chemistry side of things a little bit but uh and some of my microscopy friends uh were a little bit more leery perhaps because you know I I I I left a really good position and a bunch of really good guys at a pretty high growth company so yeah, you know, uh, hopefully I'm not crazy. But, uh, <laughs> so re still remains to be seen, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Going back to, um, I just want to ask this real quick. Was there, there over the years, I know that you've dabbled in other businesses and obviously you have this entrepreneurial spirit. Um, when was it, though, that was there something else that happened either in your life personally, if you'll go there, that really when you woke up, you really decided that, you know, now is the time. Like, was there something that happened? What was the, what was the switch inside that, <laughs> you know, that motivated you to really let go of that? Cause like you say, that's, that's a lot to walk away from. Yeah. Yeah. Good, good question. And so like nothing, nothing uh, immediate in short term, there wasn't like some trigger, I guess, really uh, that, that caused it. But I suppose, uh, just got to start thinking that, uh, so I'm 47 now, you know, still plenty of good life left, I hope, but, uh, but just started to think, you know, uh, there's, you know, before retirement or whatever, the, um, I'm closer to retirement probably than I am to the other side. Right. So figured I wanted to try to do something and also maybe try to do something that we could build up even bigger for my kids. I've got two kids. Um, 
And another thought, you know, so, so, uh, so like I said, maybe, maybe you kind of call it a midlife crisis or, but I don't, I don't really know what that means. Right. That's just a term, but, uh, or you feel like you're, you're getting a little bit older and you just want to take on something new. And another thing though, that had crossed my mind is that, you know, I'm 47, but the fact is that, uh, my dad actually died really young when I, when I was like seven years old, he died when he was like 52. So, and I, you know, you just kind of think about stuff like that. Like, Hey, it, obviously, hopefully it's not going to happen to any of us. Right. Nobody wants that, but it's one of those things that you start to, it's in the back of your head a little bit. So, yeah, I get that. And so anyway, that, that's kind of why there was no real trigger that uh, caused me to take this leap, but just these kind of things swirling around maybe, you know? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Yes. Thank you. Good question. Yeah. It sounds like you just, you just wanted some adventure. That's me. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Adventure. Yeah. No, I'm actually fairly laid back and, uh, you know, so maybe, uh, but yeah, it was just the right time. So, and wanted to get back into chemistry and it was kind of the perfect, uh, thing fitting together with me talking to my hemp farmer friend and the industry kind of booming. So, uh, figured I'd give it a try. So, like I said, you know, I don't need to dominate the world. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be one of these enormous companies probably that, uh, sells CBD everywhere. Although, you know, that I'd probably take it if it came, but, uh, but I, I just want to have a piece of it and want to help out some people and trying to start with the local market here yeah. mostly, you know. It's crazy when you think about, I did a little bit of research about CBD oil and it, it's one of those things where like, if you look at it from a market perspective, it seems like the opportunity is crazy. Like everybody's waiting for the FDA to finish the test, to be able to substantially say like, these are the effects, this is what it does, et cetera, et cetera. And there's a ton of people getting into it. Like I found out that uh, like recently the guy who made Oreos, Mondelez, says that they're exploring putting CBD in their cookies. Wow. Coca-Cola, <clears throat> exploring putting it in Coke. And, um, CBS, Walgreens, all starting to explore what it would look like to stock it on their shelves. Yeah. So it seems like there's going to be, or at least people are getting ready for what you were talking about. Like when, when, when something happens and I think it's, it's probably less what goes on with what they find out from the testing, unless the testing finds out that it's all made up, which it doesn't seem like that would be a lot of people suffering from placebo effect. Uh, right. But it's probably consumer perception is what we're waiting for to catch up. I think there's a lot of work to be done in your industry because people, I, how many times, like when you say you're hungry, how many people make munchie jokes? Is that like a new thing in your life now? <laughs> no, like, oh, no. I'm really hungry for dinner. Oh, you got the munchies. Yeah. <laughs> like, I think there's going to be a stigma that goes with CBD because its sister is the wild child for a long right. time. Um, what do you think has been helpful to help kind of break that stereotype for people? Have you seen anything yet? I think the, uh, you know, to break away from the wild child and kind of get out of that, uh, that mindset is just some more research that's happening probably yeah. in CBD and since, and really just like, like we said earlier on, you know, this just basically became legal for most people in October of yeah. last year. So the research is just kicking up and there's going to be more and more going on as to actually what it can help with and, you know, real scientific research about that. And that's, right. that's kind of what I like. And I think that's, what's going to help break the stereotype or, you know, make the industry more stable and, yeah. and, and, and more regulations certainly going to occur. You know, I, I don't know when nobody knows, but I would say over the next 12 to 24 months, you know, yeah. there's going to be some FDA regulations happening and, and, that's all good. You know, I think the, like I said, the good guys in the industry, we're all happy with that kind of stuff. Yeah. It, it's fine. So like today there's very limited requirements on how you package the things and what you say on your boxes and labels. But most people in the industry that are taking it seriously are sort of doing what, uh, what they think the FDA will recommend to yeah. do. Like, you know, so. Yeah. Uh, you're building a brand. You're probably going above and beyond. And I think that's what all I think that's why it's cool that your family owned, operated local, you're trying to do things right. And I think a lot of people are probably just thinking like, like in high school, I think like there was a kid like Casey that grew weed like on his parents' back acre. Yeah. And I think that's what a lot of people are thinking. Like there's somebody just squeezing a plant and they're like, there's the oil, here you go. Right. But it's, it's this whole involved process and you've got a lab. And one thing I ran across was um, why, I want to know, why is it a good idea to buy CBD oil from a source that uh, uses independent third party testing. Yeah, good, good, good point. Um, so, uh, like, like we said, the the industry is so unregulated right now. You, you, you're not required to do third party testing, but it, uh, it's just uh, any any CBD that you're going to buy, whether it's mine or somebody else's, you should make sure it's third party tested. Just yeah, just like, to make sure. You well, know. Unlike Joe did when he bought the crap on Amazon that he's been <laughs> sticking on his dog's tongue for the last two months. Well, yeah, that that, that, that <laughs> may have that may have been tested actually, and you don't know, but or but uh, 
doesn't necessarily mean it's bad, but so it, it's just good to have a third party test to show that the CBD content is where it's supposed to be and that like there's no mold in the product and, you know, there's certain things to watch out for. Uh, uh, part of what we do also actually, and it's mostly actually because I love the chemistry side of things is I bought a, I bought a infrared spectrometer, which is another cool word. And spectrometer. Spectrometer. Let's all just say it once. How about That's you, That's the thing that they shine Spex. in the hotel rooms to see what's gross. <laughs> yeah. is, that, <laughs> is that that thing? You, you're watching too much TV, man. <laughs> let's all take turns saying it. Infrared spectrometer. <laughs> infrared spectrometer. Very Ooh. good. That sounds especially yeah. good with the accent. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> let's leave it at that. Yeah. Pass. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> So, but, and so what, what, what we can do is we actually do some in-house testing to, and it helps me, helps me make the right kind of product, helps me make sure that it's the way I want it to be. Uh, and, you know, other companies do this too, but it's, uh, it's actually a really cool thing. And the, the, the unit that I have not to dwell on this, but the unit that I have is actually portable. So I can take it out to the hemp field and we can test the, the hemp, the raw biomass to look for CBD concentration and THC concentration and stuff like this. So we can. Uh, and I can test my oils and lotions and all that kind of stuff to make sure it's coming out like I want to make it, you know, so that the yeah. constant concentrations are all right and things like that. So Especially that's with the risk of them taking your field if you do it wrong. Yeah. Right. Uh, that, yeah. I don't know, yeah. you know, what we would do if it did test over because, but, uh, but, you know, uh, but yeah, it's nice to have a, have a sanity check yeah. and make sure it's all good. And it's, uh, for my products, it's nice to test those out. And, uh, so, but well, yeah. What are some of the stories that you've heard from your customers about how, what their experience have been using your product. Yeah. Well, a lot of different things. Uh, so, uh, we actually just, uh, in the last week or so came out with, uh, a rollerball applicator for the CBD oil. So it's, uh, it's kind of a handy dandy little, uh, rollerball that you can put in your purse or your pocket or whatever. And so it's a easy way to put it on your skin. And one of the reasons I came out with that kind of an applicator, uh, is because, I heard that the CBD was helping a lot with uh, people's rashes and even like mosquito bites. And I can tell you from firsthand experience that it works. Like I'm, I'm one of these guys, I think maybe it was you and I, Josh, we were talking about this, but like if, if I'm standing outside talking to, talking to neighbors or something and uh, it's in the evening, I'm the one that's getting bit up by mosquitoes. No yeah. question. You know, they me just, too. they gravitate towards me. me and too. I, do you have a sweet tooth? Mm -hmm. Do you eat a lot of chocolate? I, I do. That's why. Is it? Yeah. I yeah. heard it's something to do with a vitamin deficiency or something uh -huh. along those lines. Like there's a specific thing that people that get bit a lot don't yeah. have. And I heard that because I was reading an article about the army. They give people certain shots yeah. to deal with the mosquito interesting increase of mosquito bites. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I've been that way since I've been a kid, but uh, so I, so I was out last week or a couple of weeks ago and got bit up like crazy. And I, I welt up pretty good with these stupid mosquito bites. But so then I, I put some CBD on it and, you know, I've heard people had done this and it actually worked. It helped a lot. It made them go away. It stopped the itching like immediately. Wow. So I'm like, well, this is cool. So we came out with like a little rollerball kind of thing. That's, That's cool. cool. Yeah. I saw some of the reviews on your site also said that the guy was excited that it helped with ticks. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, that's the, one of my farmer friends, uh, and uh, so, you know, skin things are something that I hear a lot about it helping with, uh, but does it have like antibacterial properties or anti? you know, that kind of thing. Some, some of it does. So, and that's, that comes from the terpenes actually. Yeah. Terpenes. Of course yes. it does. It's those terpenes. <laughs> of course it does. Of course it does. You can't. Told you. The next, the next Shoot. applicator is going to be the tiny squirt bottles that all the kids have on their backpacks. Like my kids got all Terp Terpenes. You can't escape them. I just want some terpenes in a little cage <laughs> so I can feed them. They're, they're coming for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's like an add on at this, uh, when you go get a, a uh, health drink. It's like, I'm thinking a scoop of terpenes. <laughs> I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. There's, there's value in these terpenes for sure, but, Man, uh, but I, I, I digress. So. What, about, <laughs> what about side effects? Side effects. So, uh, the, the, the research is still going on, uh, Maddie, but so, and realistically, I think the most common side effect that I've heard about from the CBD oil, and it's mostly when you're taking it, uh, orally, like under the tongue with the CBD oil is that sometimes you might get tired. And it doesn't seem to do that to me. Like, and that's something that I wanted to stress, you know, CBD tends to affect everybody differently all the way from, from the good stuff to some of these side effects. But really the only side effect that I've read about, uh, in any significant amount is like, sometimes it makes you sleepy like an hour after you take it. So like mm. what I actually do is I, I take some of my oil, uh, you put it under your tongue for like 60 or 90 seconds and that, and then you just swallow it. 
uh, we have some different flavors and the, re the reason you put it under your tongue is because there's a lot of blood vessels there. It's a sublingual kind of a thing. So it gets into your body really quickly if you take it that way. Like if you were to uh, put it in food or a drink or an edible, like some people do, that's all good. You're going to get it still, but it has to go through your gut then, which is a lot slower and not as efficient. So some of the most efficient ways to take CBD is indeed under the tongue. Um, so uh, my point was that I usually take it in the morning and the evening. And I think actually, I don't really have a problem sleeping uh, myself, but I think it does help me sleep a little bit sounder. I take it like an hour before I go to bed and uh, you know, it helps. And uh, I've got some, uh, I don't, uh, uh, some creaky knees, I guess, maybe 47 year old kind of knees, you know, just from running and doing stuff like that. And I use some of the lotion and it actually does help almost immediately with that. Yeah. On the other hand, you'll talk to some people and they'll tell you, or they'll uh, attest to the fact that it takes a while for it to build up in their bodies to help them. So mm -hmm. like if you try CBD, whether it's mine or somebody else's, I'd recommend you give it a good shot, you know, for a few weeks or a month even. Don't like try it for two days and it doesn't do something for you yeah. and, and just pitch it. It might do something for you within a couple of days, but it might not. So I was talking to somebody the other day um, and they were talking about sleep medications. And I guess, um, you know, one of the things about them and so many people are dealing with, you know, anxiety and not being able to sleep and that kind of thing. Um, and that the pharmaceuticals, they actually don't, you never get into an, is it REM sleep? So you never actually... You may be knocked out, but you're not getting the benefits of good sleep. Yeah. Um, and then the next thing you know, you're dependent on it, you know, say no more. So with CBD, you're not having that. You're probably getting the quality sleep. Your body is not having that massive reaction. You're not just been knocked out. I think it's so. It's working with your body. Yep. I agree with you. Yeah. yeah. And that seems to be what, what some of the initial research is saying. Yeah. It's, it's interesting, like with CBD, you know, like I said, the main side effect that I've read about is uh, sometimes it'll make you sleepy. But like if you look at any kind of over-the-counter drug that's FDA approved and legit or anything, even the commercials on TV, right? You hear like most of the commercial is all these side effects. Oh my gosh, so, it's scary. So it's kind of weird, you know, that like... Uh, so if there was a CBD oil commercial, the side effects might be, you might get tired. <laughs> I don't know, you know, maybe, maybe today, yeah. Yeah, actually it'll probably be, a, by that time it'll be a laundry list whether right. it's, you know, like 0.05% uh, of the population or not. But uh but yeah, it's just interesting how like, you know, everybody will take these over the counter drugs uh, because the doctor says so, you know, which is cool. I do that too when I need something, but, but then there's a lot of stigma around this CBD, which is all natural and, you know, may or may not have all these side effects. And uh, so it's, it's just an interesting kind of comparison between some of the, some of the drugs that people take every day and yeah. like a CBD kind of thing. And what, what a lot of people say though, is that the thing to do uh, at least today is even take CBD in conjunction with some other doctor prescribed stuff. You know, you don't have to take it in lieu of it necessarily. You don't have to ditch your, uh, whatever name your drug, uh, for CBD. Sometimes, uh, it can actually help work with those drugs. So, and that's kind of, that kind of makes sense, uh, yeah. with some of the chemistry that's going on with your body Is with the CBD. Is there anything that you should absolutely not put it with? Uh, good, good. Cocaine. Good. <laughs> <laughs> uh -oh. that's probably a good thing to uh, not take it with i'd imagine uh uh i'm not sure really maddie actually yeah that's yeah. a really good question i haven't i haven't heard of anything in particular uh well that's a good thing yeah there's not there's uh the the research today at least shows that there's really no way to od on cbd you can't really overdose you know um i think i think maybe you'd get really tired or it would uh maybe upset your stomach if you took like a whole lot of it but and, and you would have to take a whole, whole lot of it, I think, to, uh, to feel the effects of its, of its wicked stepsister, you know, to get high or whatever. So, uh, CBD. Like how much, like it, it would be comically a lot, right? If it's like 0.4% or whatever you said. Yeah. It, yeah. You have to drink like a two gallon container. Like, it would be something crazy like that. Like yeah. some, and, and, uh, yeah. So sorry kids out there <laughs> trying yeah. to steal your parents' CBD yeah. that they're giving to their pets, like shooting it like it's a jello shot. Yeah. It's not going to happen for you. <laughs> no, it's not, not going to work. It's just on kind of one of those unreasonable kind of things. Like you would have to drink tons of it, you know? So like in the, there is one drug on the market today that's made with, uh, I think it's, I think it's almost pure CBD and it's a, it's a, it's a, a drug that's regulated by the FDA. It's called Epidiolex. It's like a, a, a seizure kind of a drug and, to date, that's the only drug that's out there uh, uh, released uh, that's uh, prescribed by doctors that includes uh, cannabidiol. 
I just want to go back to what I was saying before. Like I would much, if you're thinking about taking CBD oil, I would much more consider a route like going with Matt in a local company who grows it and does everything than big pharma. Like it's crazy what, you know, they're being held responsible for now with Johnson and Johnson and the opioid epidemic. Mm -hmm. And essentially like if you haven't been following the news story, the accusation or what they're being accused of is basically creating a problem, filing bankruptcy and saying mea culpa. And then now they're selling the antidote Mm -hmm. to the problem that they created, which is why people don't trust big pharma. It's like, Oh, we did a bad thing. Sorry. By the way, here's the, here's the uh, solution. And it's, you know, X amount of money, which is, doesn't really do a lot to help you (laughs) have confidence in big pharmaceutical companies. It's true. Yeah, it's true. I mean, it's, uh, we'll we'll see how the industry changes over time with, with CBD and hemp, but uh, I think there will be some changes. So I'm curious, going back, uh, what do you feel like, cause this is brand new for you. You started it this year. What have you learned about founding a business that surprised you? Yeah, man. (laughs) Uh, how expensive it is (laughs) (laughs) and especially actually like, CBD is a very special industry, uh, kind of like we've talked about a little bit. It's uh, everything is more expensive just because of those three letters, basically. So you name it from like insurance to uh, website payment processors. Uh, there's, you know, pretty much take what you would have for like a normal business that's not CBD and double it. it it's really crazy just because of it has the stigma around it really. I don't even know how to explain it. And yeah. it, I think it's going to change, you know, it'll get better, but regulation right, will help. Like regulation will help. Yeah. Cause then, you know, the, uh, everything's more expensive. Uh, like I said, from insurance to payment processors, uh, uh, equipment has a high premium on it. Um, so that, I suppose that's one of my main, uh, uh, takeaways from, from this startup is that it's a little bit more costly than I had expected. Uh, mm-hmm. But, but it, you know, it's all good. I'm having so much fun with my, my boy toys. So. <laughs> <laughs> and you found a number one fan and you found Maddie Blanchett and Carrie Living Magazine and Josh and Joe. That's right. right. Uh, <laughs> yep. Which I wouldn't be here right now. So yeah. It's, uh, an entourage of turp. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll be your entourage. So if you had a big, if there was a big red button in front of you right now, and if you pressed it, it would magically reset back to January. And you could redo uh-huh. this year thus far. What would you do different? Wow, that's a that's a, that's a good one. Um, I guess I would have thought more about marketing stuff earlier on. So, like uh, Maddie knows this really well. Like right now, I'm in I'm in uh, full marketing kind of mode, like trying to get the word out there about my company. Uh, whether it's, you know, advertising and carry living or midtown and doing some of the plug. Yeah. (laughs) Doing, doing a great podcast with you guys or whatever. But, uh, but initially, uh, my initial challenge was the technical side to try to make some good CBD. So maybe it all went like it should or had to, you know, but I think, I think, uh, I think, um, marketing budget is something that everybody always forgets, right? Maddie until the end. Yes. Yes, this is true. <laughs> so, this you know, it's like, Oh, I got all this stuff now. How do I let somebody know what's out there? But, uh, yeah. so, so I suppose thinking about that a little bit early on, earlier on and planning a little bit more, you know, would have been helpful. But, did, uh, did you know about the social media limits or limitations? I, I did actually, that was something I looked at first and, uh, yeah, good, good point there, Maddie. So, uh, again, uh, because of the three letters CBD, the, the way that I can advertise is way different than most people. So I, I cannot do Google AdWords. You can't do a pay-per-click campaign on Google. They won't let you. I, I can't boost uh, Facebook posts or Instagram posts. Really? You know? So wow. I, can, I, I, I can have an Instagram page and we've got a decent one, but you know, I can't boost the posts. It's all, it's all really organic. So yeah. the, the advertising, it's, it's, I think it's harder. It's harder, you know, so... That's why I've got great people like Maddie helping me out here. Uh, to I know. I'm actually hoping you're going to be at the Raleigh Night Market tomorrow night. And I can introduce you to Audra with um, Fur Baby Pet Sitters. She's just launching that Fur Baby Desserts. And um, I think you guys, you absolutely need to meet. I feel like there's a future for some pet products with her. That's great. Yeah. It's like a, I, I think it's more grassroots with CBD to... Uh, to make, to get it off the ground and make the marketing happen because yeah. you can't do all these sort of easy things. You know, I, I would welcome being able to give Google some money to pay for some pay-per-click, you know, and 
of course, so would everybody else in this market too. So when you go out, are you going to have a special branded uniform, like the lab coat and maybe some, a beaker that has smoke coming out of it? Like, could you, <laughs> are you going to set a branding standard with you when you're socializing? Every time you go out networking, yeah. you bring a beaker and a you cup mean, of dry yeah. ice. I mean, fight Google, tippies. fight big, big pharma, all this, just go at it with that. Everything you can on you, you know, that is a really good idea. Yeah, and yeah I do. I do. Have, I do have the lab coat. I've got some beakers. We, yeah. I could, I could cook something up there. You just I love make it, it like yeah. smoke and like look. Yeah, a sure. liquid nitrogen yeah, in your yeah. back pocket all the time. A flash of fire and smoke, and then yes. I, you know, yes. like yes. go to a chamber of commerce yeah. meeting. Wham! Yeah. Oh, just mess. walk in smelling <laughs> like him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Here. <laughs> yeah, carry the bud around, you know. Dropping terpenes. Yeah. <laughs> Dropping terpenes. Just don't drop any terpenes on we my were, shoe. And right? We were talking about, um, you know, I was actually thinking about you the other day and places where you could go and, and speak. Um, so that was one of the ways that, you know, I was trying to come up with different places. Yeah. I think yeah. here's what I like about your story. You came on and one of the first things you said is I'm not trying to take over the world. I just want to help some people. Yeah. And I want to leave something for my kids. And I think you got a North Carolina story about how you're trying to help people and do it the right way. And I think you're in a challenging industry presenting you with a set of challenges. But anytime you've put somebody in a box where they have a set of creative challenges, it forces them to innovate and to get smart and figure out how to, how to do it. And I would just encourage you to keep running down the path you're doing. I wouldn't try to make yourself look like Big Pharma or do anything that makes it look like all that stuff. I think your story is in helping people. And uh, in your process, which is pretty cool. And it's yeah. local. And the fact that you um, process and you are the face in a sense, right? Like you are, you have a sales head on you and, yep. and you're marketing. And that's, that's part of the story that really hits me is like you control the whole thing and it's, you care about it. Yeah. You're pouring right. your heart into it. Yeah. Right on guys. That's, that's is, it really. Yeah. yeah. It's people. It's helping people. Yep. Yeah. So that's, now the big question, uh, but I think we, we've already kind of answered it, but if you could kind of just sum it up, like, now that you've been in it for a while, um, what's your why with starting Peak City CBD? Why did you do it? I think we just kind of summed it up, but I want to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, in in the end, really, actually, it is just uh, trying to help some people out with some natural stuff that, uh, you know, they don't need prescriptions for and can, that's, there's just so many success stories of CBD. And uh, I know I can make some good stuff. So, yeah, I mean, really that, that, that's what I love to get is the feedback from somebody that, oh yeah, it's helping my son sleep. Uh, he's got ADHD and it's helping him make it through the, the next day at school, you know, or, uh, it helped, uh, helped, uh, the inflammation in my knee, you know, or something like that. So these are, these are stories that we hear from, from our CBD and that's, that's the best. That's what I like the best. Really. Yeah. You got to have the success story. So, and it's nice to, those are starting to come in, starting to pour in. It's early on here, but that's, that's really good really good to know. So that means I'm, 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 uh, I'm, I'm, I'm doing it the right way, I guess. Yeah. Well, very cool. Yeah. Thank you so much for being on the show. Talking wow. to us about, um, what you got going on at peak city CBD. So by way of a quick plug, do you have anything coming up? We got your website is peakcitycbd.com. Correct. Yeah. Peakcitycbd.com. Uh, uh, check it out for, uh, some of the products that we're uh, offering, uh, like I said, we just came out with a rollerball CBD and within two weeks we'll have a pet line uh, because CBD is often used also for pets for some of the same reasons as humans like anxiety or inflammation. Yeah. So all the same reasons actually, uh, they, they might not be able to talk about it as much, but it, I think it does help. My help. wife, I think she knows, she's a, like a psychic connection to the dog. Like she knows when the dog's hungry and like when it's not feeling right. Or if I was mean to the dog, she's like, you hurt the dog's feelings. I'm like, how, <laughs> how do you know this? Give it, give it some <laughs> CBD. He'll feel better. Yeah. So. <laughs> oh, I have one quick question. Um, what about like nutritional value? Is there, are there people taking it as just like a nutritional supplement? Well, so it, it's being added to a lot of different products, you know, all the, so in conjunction with other supplements right. uh, by itself, I'm not sure it has a lot of nutritional value per right. se, but it is, uh, they are putting it into, you know, some uh, other supplements with other vitamins and And a lot of people like are that, saying so. they're getting results in uh, recovery, right? Like if you're working out, helps yeah. with the recovery. Yeah, that's actually a really good one. That, that seems to be a popular area where CBD can really help too. So uh, either both pre-workout and post-workout, so to help your muscles heal. It, it's really, it's crazy stuff. It's it, amazing. Did I hear that Ron Gronkowski from the New England Patriots is now retired and like... 
promoting CBD? Yeah, man, not mine. I I missed the boat with him. Right, but, uh, but in general, <laughs> I mean, you know. But yeah, no, it's all good. Yeah, he, yeah. he I heard him on the news just the other day. He's uh, he's he, he's been retired, I think, for a couple of years, and he hooked up with some CBD company, and he says it helps him with his you know aches and pains, and yeah, so that's all good. I mean, I think the sports industry that's a really really hot area for this. Uh, there's there's so many different ways to. Uh, get the CBD in your body from yeah the- what about the rumors that like Tiger and um, what was the other girl for was chewing CBD gum during the yeah yeah that's mm. there's there's CBD gum there's CBD oil there's lotions there's uh, vapes there's edibles everything so, you'd you'd Lit yeah, with the naughty, bombs. the naughty sister you get with the CBD. Basically, yeah. 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 What happens when the naughty sister moves in and becomes legal in North Carolina and starts growing? Is that how is that going to affect the hemp market and growing? It and well, I think there's always going to be uh, people that want to have. Uh, I'll use the kind of slogan again. It's not mine, but the healing without the high. You know, so because uh, the the naughty sister that's you know that's got the THC in it, so that's going to give you that that kind of buzzed feeling, right? But uh, the hemp hemp does not. So. It depends. Uh, depends on what you're going for, I guess, and, yeah. and whether it's legal. But yeah, yeah, got it. No duels yeah. versus vodka. <laughs> Basically, yes. We don't have to keep that in there. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. All right. I like that you instantly doubted it. No, it's the end of the show. That's definitely the end. <laughs> and it's a wrap. <laughs> Well, thanks again for being on, Matt. It was great having you. Thanks, wow, Maddie, man. for co-hosting thanks. with Thank us. Thank you for having me. Thanks so much, guys. Yeah. It's awesome, man. Great day to be here. Thanks, Matt. We love you. Thanks. Yeah. We love making this stuff for you. You can help us out by subscribing wherever you get your podcasts. Get unstuck. Tell a better story. And have a good answer to the question, what are you doing today? 